of allegiance. Mm -hmm. Get it up there. Get it up there. All right. I don't see it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice for all. All right, folks. Statement by myself is this is the, our second budget workshop. Um, so I'm going to hand this over to Mr. McNamee, 2.1 presentation of 2022 school budget to school committee. Hey, thank you, Patrick. Uh, John, do you want to? Uh... You should be able to if you want to hit the button. Yep. Do you have it? Oh, there it goes. There we go. And everybody can hear me? Good. Sounds good. Okay. Um, so, uh, well, as I said the last time, this is kind of a, a, a work in progress and we'll have adjustments and, and we do have some uh, that we've made over the, uh, the last week. Um, so right now, if you look at um, the page one um, of, of your handout, but you can follow along on the screen because this is what you have. You can see the town appropriation now was adjusted downward by 32,484, uh, giving us a proposed increase in our town appropriation of 204,960, which is about 2.85%. Uh, and you can look at the revenues, which will be um, increasing by 203052, uh, which is 2.64%. And that will be the same for the expenses. So our expenses really have gone up 2.64%. And we're requesting uh, additional funding for the town of uh, about 285 of what they gave us uh, last year. We've generally tried to be um, below the 3%. Um, I'm not sure whether the town is looking to, for us to be closer to 2.5%. But um, uh, I think last year we were somewhere between the 2 and 2.5%. But um, this year we're looking to be uh, somewhere around the 2.85%. Um, there are still a couple of items that are going to be uh, estimates in the budget. Um, again, we don't have a solid number for our increases in health care and dental. We probably won't get that number until sometime uh, late March, uh, early April. Uh, we also have not heard back from the uh, Newport County Regional Special Education Program. So we do have an estimate in there for an increase uh, and at this point in time, um, I think it's a reasonable increase, but uh, we certainly have not finalized that, that number yet. Those are the two, the two big items at this point in time. Uh, of course, we still have the um, a not certified uh, uh, contractor we're negotiating too. So. Um, we do have a placeholder in, in, in the budget for that number as well. So if we move down to, uh, there were no changes in the salary uh, number, the 3,610,100 is what we had originally proposed in the budget and uh, no changes on the fringe benefits. Uh, those are the two big numbers, uh, certainly in the, in the budget. So there were no changes on those. Um, we did have some um, decreases and, and John, John Gabriel had gone through his budget. We did have um, additional lease that um, 
I didn't have the full amount in there for the uh, Promethean boards. Uh, so that lease is uh, 8,000 a quarter, 32,000 a year. So uh, we had to take another look at uh, some of our technology costs and uh, look to reduce those. So John was pretty good in going through his budget to, to see what, where we could save. So that 4,900 and 2,000 would be savings that he's projected in the, uh, the web-based programs and in the uh, professional training. Uh, so there's about 6,900 that we're saving on the technical and professional services. Um, as far as total purchase property services, there were no changes in, in that, that particular expense category. And um, the chair had asked that uh, 15,000 be added to advertising cost. And I don't know, Patrick, if you wanna uh, give your thoughts on that number, because that was a proposal that you had made. So my, my um, I think we should add 15,000 advertising and promoting of the school as we creep towards IB and we want to attract our out of district students. I don't think there's any money better spent than promoting the school and getting kids in here to fill these seats. And I think you all know without me going on my high horse here, how I feel about promoting the school and getting seats filled up because if we don't, There'll be no school. There'll be no budget. So I'll just, I'll just end it there. And if I have to defend it more, I'm more than happy to. Okay. On the um, the next line item, we've, um, uh, as I indicated at the last meeting, uh, Gene Dunn had gotten back to me with the medical supplies, and we needed to increase that by about twenty eight hundred. She was hoping to get some money from the state for PPE and. Uh, at this point in time, uh, we're not sure whether we'd be able to get that. So we've added 2,800 to the medical supplies line item. The general supplies was reduced by five. Uh, Sonia had asked that uh, we reduce that and add 5,000 to the library budget. So there's uh, no impact on um, that particular materials and supplies line item. And again, we're reducing our computer supplies by about 7,000. John has gone through his supply line and was able to reduce that by 7,000. So it's an overall reduction in that particular line item by 4,200. This is where we had significant number of changes. As you recall, um, we've uh, added for example, on the equipment line item, if we stay with that, we initially had 50,000 in there for the phase two gym upgrade that we're going to request that come out of the capital budget at the town. We reduced the telephone equipment by about 16. Uh, there are a couple of other items in there that John had reduced and uh, that's where I had to add the, um, the 30, um, no, excuse me, that's, um, so that's uh, 16 and then we add, we reduced another 2789 out of expenses uh, from the technology budget. So that was reduction in equipment by 68,789. The uh, technology hardware, uh, John was able to reduce uh, some items in there and then I needed to add the 32,000 to cover the, um, lease cost for the Promethean boards. That's a four-year lease. Um, as of this year, we would pay probably uh, 24000 on that. So we'll, we'll have another uh, over three years um, left on that particular lease. And we also reduced the technology software by about 600 to bring that down. Uh, Lori had asked for um, 3,500 for um, a national superintendent's um, program. I don't know, Laurie, if you wanna mention anything relative to that program. Absolutely. Last week, I participated in a national summit over two days for, um, the st for superintendents. And it was offered by the same consulting firm uh, and professional organization that the Department of Education in Rhode Island uh, contracted with 
um, during the reopening plan writing process that all superintendents had to um, engage in uh, in July, August, and September. And it just so happened that in my breakout sessions were a few Rhode Island superintendents. All Rhode Island and su superintendents were invited to this summit. Um, some districts already belong to the DM group and there's just so much bang for your buck. I was so impressed. Um, last week's summit was all about equity and education and um, it was really eye-opening to hear from superintendents throughout the country. Uh, in the general sessions and in all the breakout sessions, they've all experienced everything that Little Compton has experienced um, during this past year regarding um, issues of diversity, um, equity and inclusion in schools. Um, and so looking at the benefits of membership I felt that there was a lot of value. Not only do um, I get to attend virtual summits all year long, um, I can also bring several staff members, uh, a group of five, four different times, and also ask for um, very targeted um, consults four or five times a year with this small team. And so seeing that we're so tiny and we're all wearing a lot of hats, I mean, you're looking at the, you know, water delivery system head here. Um, and, and there's so few of us on the district level. I just felt it would be a so much value, so much bang for our buck. Um, at one point I did belong to the National Superintendent's Roundtable. And so I decided to forego that membership and add this one. This one has much more actionable um, opportunities for actionable feedback, um, you know, national, regional, and local um, events. Obviously, they're all virtual at this point. So that is my ask. Um, backing out of the, the um, superintendent's roundtable, national superintendent's roundtable, and adding this. Uh, uh, thank you, Larry. So it, uh, the total adjustments were a reduction in our expenses of 32,484, bringing us from a preliminary budget of 7,916,131 to 7,883,647. So that's an increase of 203,052 or 2.64%. Um, I think the town is probably looking at a similar increase in expenses as well on their budget uh, based on some conversation that I've had with them. So I think we're, we're in line. I, I, I feel pretty comfortable with the, uh, with the increases in expenses that we do have uh, after these adjustments. So at this point, I can entertain any additional questions that anybody has on the budget. Oh, I'm, I sorry, I was, I'm sorry, I was sorry. muted. Um, at this point, I just want to reiterate to the to this committee, this is our, our time now to look at the budget, add stuff, take stuff out, ask questions to our professionals. And we're also going to vote on it at the seven o'clock meeting. Now, I want to be clear to the committee. If you don't feel comfortable that you didn't have enough time to go through this and you have more questions, that's fine too. We can always table it and we can meet at a special meeting in the near future. I know John McNamee would, would love that. Um, <laughs> so don't feel like you have to Oh man, I got to vote on this thing. I got questions about this. I needed to look at it some more. You have all the time you want. And I'm talking to my, my fellow other four committee members. So, you know, so get comfortable, relax, look at the numbers. Uh, and even though it is on the agenda at seven to vote, doesn't mean we have to. Um, you know, no one's going to get upset. 
trust me, we've been, all been to special meetings. Uh, they're not a big deal. So having said that, uh, I see Chris Gula, you have your hand raised. Chris, I'm just gonna hold you for a second um, because we're still under 2.1 open meeting and I'm gonna let my school committee members if they have some input to have some. And then when we go to public input, you will be asked to speak because you had your hand raised. So there you go. Any questions from the committee? Go ahead. Yes. Um, may I? Rita, go ahead. Rita, go ahead. Okay. Um, so my first question is regarding uh, the fifteen thousand um, dollars. It's you. You came up with that number, not arbitrarily. I'm assuming that you have some vision. Is there a particular ad agency or? Um, do you have a plan for some sort of marketing? Um, I, I, I'm completely supportive of marketing, but I'm just curious how that number came out. Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I, I you know, actually, when I thought about the number, I called the superintendent and uh, we texted about you know all the great things we could do uh, with the money. Um, and I was comfortable with, with how, how much it would cost. Uh, so there, yeah, there is a, uh, a plan. Um, I don't know, Superintendent. Do you, you do you want to speak about our, our plan? Well, Patrick came up came up with the number, and, and it is quite generous. But if we want to hire a professional videographer to, to come up with an incredible um, with high production values, a great video, we've been relying on sort of a, you know hopes and and wishes that Channel Ten would. Um, give us some free airtime, and they have. They've given me free airtime. They, they gave my predecessor predecessor free airtime, but it's a one and done. So, you know, we would like to have, um, a, you know, a, a high production value um, video done about everything that our school has to offer our facilities, which is second to none. Our, um, our distance learning, our hybrid learning program, second to none, our Promethean um, piece, uh, notably, our um, small class sizes, the amount of extracurricular, co-curricular um, offerings. Also, I, I see that $15,000 as um, perhaps someone on site, someone, um, for instance, Heather Fitzgerald created a fantastic pamphlet um, a few years ago that really did have an impact. We did drops all over. We mailed them. We dropped them at, at all the preschools in the area, um, you know, future scholars, little peeps, you name it. We did get kids in our primary grades from those drops. And so, you know, using, utilizing, um, some of our resources on site above and beyond their work day and that costs money. So some professional services, we don't have a, um, we don't have a PR firm in mind yet or even um, any sort of media services um, enterprise in mind, but that's a piece of it. And also um, our own human resources being asked to leverage their talents um, Ms. Fitzgerald has a, she had a career before she came to uh, Loba McMahon in public relations. And that is definitely, um, you know, at, at play when, when she does some social media posts uh, for me and also for um, Sonia when she created that brochure. She's pushed out some great PR. She's pushed out some, um, great press release releases in particular. You've read some of them in the um, Sakata Times. And so the plan is not fully fleshed out yet, Rita. Great question. But Patrick and I will have a plan attached to those funds. So, so Rita, yeah. you know, my, in, my, in my vision, it needs to be sustainable, um, the advertising and the promotion of the school. And we need to promote the IB program and how wonderful it is. And uh, we need to be sustainable with that. We just can't go out once or twice. Um, you know, we have to work hard at it and, and be professional about it. 
and have some high quality advertising yeah. um, to make right. this make this happen. Portsmouth has a, Portsmouth has some beautiful documentation. Um, beautiful, I'm sure we've all seen them. Be beautiful pamphlets. The strategic plan is um, it, you know full color, multiple pages, and we don't have anything like that. Um, so, I you know we we need. A, you know, we need to raise our profile. It's right. unfortunate that we're in the middle of our first year, you know, as a candidate for the Middle Years International Baccalaureate Program, which is huge. And, and the fact that we've been told we are so on target, we, it is, this is a huge, prestigious, um, you know, uh, program. Uh, yeah. program and, and it's almost anticlimactic at this point because of the pandemic. And we really need to put pedal to the metal and um, you know, just celebrate and, and highlight and underscore and publicize everything that Wilbur McMahon has to offer. The fact that we have seven tuition students in the middle of a pandemic speaks to, and I said it last week, speaks to our strengths, speaks to what makes us unique, speaks to what makes um, families willing to commute. Some of them, like I said, over, over bridges to access this wonderful, precious educational resource. Right, so. you do. And, and I agree with you and the school offers so much. Um, yes. So I just, in, and it it is a big number, um, but I think that if you, it, it would be yours to manage, right? But I mm. would strongly encourage the use of a good reputable advertising, you know, a marketing firm that will pull it all together because I think, and it is wonderful that we're utilizing internal resources. So you have um, the capability to, you know, make a brochure and you have some, but I think a coordinated plan is what's really Absolutely. needed uh, so that the branding is solid and it's seen throughout a good, a highly coordinated marketing plan. But yeah, we, we need it. And when it's done well, uh, it will service us. So, you know, Rita, you said the word that, that, that you said the word that that uh, that I, I my vision is is branding. We need to brand this school. You know, we, we need to have that branding. And uh, I think we're I'm hopeful that we're at the beginning of it right now. You know, and uh, hopefully uh, in a few years we'll, we'll get there. We'll see. Yeah, great. I agree. Good, good, good idea. And I, I do also want to uh, speak in support of your um, 3,500 for the national VM group. It sounds valuable because I'm thinking, you know, that would coordinate with you're working with superintendents, local superintendents who can yes. also push the word out of, about Little Compton. So that would be advantageous, potentially advantageous too. So yeah. um, I like that. That particular group did an amazing job with the, uh, like I said, the reopening plan process. We, I attended their sessions on, um, you know, what an exemplary reopening pro uh, plan would look like. And they also vetted all the drafts that I sent to them. And, um, and yet, yeah, and, and our reopening plan got kudos from them even. And, and they used it as, um, as a, pretty good uh, example as well. So we sold on DM group. And that's the only reason why Rhode Island superintendents were invited on mass is because uh, our state did contract with that consultant um, and that also um, within it has a district leadership um, cohort. So it was really, among the best summits I've ever attended and I've done more than my share um, as an educator throughout the years. It was so well done and brilliantly executed and I can't say enough about it. So I'll be bring, bringing some of you here to um, a few of their offerings. Sure, thank you. Anyone else from the committee on questions yes. on the budget? Yeah, Patrick, what did- Mike, one? go ahead, Mike. Directed to John, um, John, in our last budget meeting, you had referred to that there was a savings that you saw that we were going to have five thousand dollars by combining services with the town as far as a, from the trash removal. And per the budget layout that I got, I do not see that. 
uh, yeah, that's not it, it's not fully um, included in the budget. So uh, we 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 cut our daily uh, um, excuse me our monthly pickups for the trash in half. So we're saving about four fifty a month in the daily pickups. Um, there is uh, another piece to that. There's a cardboard recycling that we're charged on a monthly basis for the pickup. I'm, I'm talking with the town now on how we can get that cardboard over to the transfer station and have Republic do that pickup there rather than charging us for that. Um, but um, at the, um, I, I think we should be looking at Right now, we're looking at about. Uh, it looks like it's 15 in your budget. Yeah, so it, it, it actually had a little bit of an increase in um, as a re result of what, what I thought was going to be cross cost increases. So we could, we could probably bring that down to about 10. Um, we could probably bring that. Uh, down around 10, but obviously, you know, if we're not, we're not going to spend it, we're not going to spend it, but uh, um, so, all right, so basically, you're in the process of working that out. There's a potential savings of, of 5,000 on that by us combining yeah. services, is what it comes down to. Yeah. The other thing is, um, we just recently voted on upgrading the fixtures within the school. Um, and I, under, I understand that that was to, that was to be paid through um, our savings of, on the actual electricity cost. Those fixtures, shouldn't that, and, it, and this is more of an accountant thing, uh, and the reason why I'm asking is, shouldn't that be put down as a capital outlay so that we can actually see what we're actually spending on the electricity compared to the actual cost of the fixtures. And I know it's based on over a five year period. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it, um, it, it's, it's tough to, um, you could put that, but then the question is, you know, is it, what's the value of that asset when you do put it on there? Um, Although it's getting paid to electricity, we could put it on, but um, we don't depreciate assets. So you're not getting that expense being charged into, um, into, the, general, into the expense side of it as well too. So when we net it in with the electricity in, in effect, it, 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 it's kind of writing it off as we go along. Um, because uh, most of the districts that do that financing don't don't put the asset on and gross it up that way. I guess we just don't know what our actual cost is on the electricity. That's all. So we can compare it from year to year. That's why I say this. Well, yeah, we will. We'll, we'll be able to do that from the bill because it's going to be separately stated on the bill. So I track the uh, the kilowatt hours right. separate from any of the other expenses. So. I can provide that annually so you can see what the actual kilowatt hours are. We're also hoping to uh, get the virtual net metering going on that. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm hoping that we can get some impact in the FY22, but that takes a while to get going. So, uh, but that's another potential savings that we're gonna have on the electric side. My, I guess my last question is, do you know what we have for the uh, accumulated surplus? It's, it's, uh, it's about 47,000 in the general fund. John McNamee, wasn't there a time when the surplus was a million dollars? Yeah, you know, it goes back to times when there was monies that came in for, um, um, it goes back to 2008 for the stimulus money that came in and some of that money was, was never spent. So it wound up getting it to, uh, into surplus, but it was, it was a million, three million, four actually before yeah. the, um, 
but the agreement was when they when they did the new school renovations that the cost of uh, doing the pods and um, in getting um, the students into the pods was going to be borne by the uh, by the surplus. So that's really what took down that surplus over the years. It's interesting. Anyone else on the committee? I'm going to go to public input, but obviously committee members, you can Patrick, just- Patrick, Patrick. Yes, go ahead. Excuse me, ahead. Polly's, Polly's got a comment. I was, I was being polite and quiet over here. Um, did you have, did you hand, have I your hand up? I was waving it around. Yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> could someone break down the substitute cost for me? Um, I seem to remember, I could be totally wrong, that we had a, is it a building sub for a while? Um, and so just my rough math, which is probably not right, but it, the figure that we have comes down to like five and a half substitutes a day. Is, is that correct? Is that what we're seeing? Am I totally wrong? Um, can someone explain that to me? Uh, uh, Polly, I think in the in the uh, my original uh, budget, I, I, I don't have that one in front of me, but there is a uh, detail on the substitutes in terms of the number of substitute days that we utilized in uh, FY20. So we used those days uh, and multiplied that times the new rate, just to kind of get an estimate of what that that number would be. So. It's um, yeah, so it comes to the uh, yeah. So on on the budget I'm looking at, it, I think it's the updated one. I could be wrong. Um, it's a um, hundred and thirty four thousand six hundred, and I think we pay one thirty five a substitute. And I I did the math before with the hundred and eighty days and. All that. well, that's, it. that's the daily rate. Um, just know that every now and then we have to hire a long-term substitute that okay. kicks it up sometimes double that or more, especially in a high need area like secondary science and math. Um, and that I'll be reporting out on that at the next meeting. We have um, something coming up. So there hasn't been a year yet where we didn't have a long-term substitute or two. As you know, after a certain amount of days, they get, they get a per diem rate based on the LCTA contract, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the 135 would be that one day. Uh, yep. Don't forget our nurse substitutes are 200 a day. Okay. Uh, although this done is never out, but um, when she is, you know, that, that does impact that number. So. Do we do, and do we still have a building substitute? Yes, we do. And I will be reporting out on that at the next meeting. Um, okay. you know, do, we want to definitely, um, be in line with, um, open meeting. The open okay. Meeting back. All right. So yeah. we'll discuss that later. Yes, but not for long. Yeah. So Polly, that's uh, 957 sub days, I think is in the estimate. Thank you. Um, can I just make one last comment if everyone else has- You can take your time, go ahead. Thank you. Um, John McNamee, I love it when you say, I feel pretty good about this. So that was reassuring. And is that expressing your level of confidence that this will be acceptable to our town? Um, I think, uh, yeah, I think it's you know, certainly a reasonable budget. You know, when you look at it, there's a lot of contractual items in the budget. Um, so, I mean, we've, we've kind of scaled down some of those one-time expenditures like in capital so that, um, you know, I, I, I think we're down to, uh, I think, a, 
a, a reasonably uh, good budget. Uh, you know, there's there's really not a lot of fluff in the budget at this point in time. So you'd like to see a little bit of, uh, you know, if we don't have a good surplus, you don't want to start running a deficit and then having to get into deficit reduction plans and corrective action plans, which you have to file with the Auditor General. So you're always concerned about that. But um, but I think, um, you know, the revenue side looks good at this point. Um, I don't believe that we should see any adjustments in the state aid number uh, at this point. Uh, but, you know, that, that can always change. As you know, last year, they shorted us that June payment. So that was like, $36,000 worth of revenue that came out. Now they did give us some money for COVID expenses to make up for that. But, you know, if we had to take a, a $40,000 hit, you know, it's, um, you know, it's, it's really a balanced budget. So we could see some impact if that happened, but uh, I'm hoping that we don't see that, or at least I'm not hearing that we're going to see that at this point in time. So, yeah, I, I feel, I feel pretty good about it. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I think it's good. Anyone else? So, from the it's, it's, it's Lori's budget anyway, so I don't. Uh... <laughs> well, you know, this is the first budget that is in sync uh, totally with the, the tweaking of Title 16, the statute. Um, Principal Whip had a lot of um, agency in crafting this budget on the building level. I think we all have to remember that school budgets are generally anywhere from 90 to 93 percent fixed costs, contractual obligations, utilities, et cetera, et cetera, um, and seven to 10 percent uh, of discretionary monies. And I think we really squeezed a lot of value out of the discretion, you know, maybe seven percent in Little Compton. Um, am I right, John? Discretionary monies, if we had to guesstimate. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's probably the most intentional budget um, in my three years in, in Little Compton. Um, and site-based management is evident in some of these changes that occurred this past week. So um, I think it's good. I mean, it's in line with what the town itself is, is uh, the, you know, the other departments are asking for. I know districts asking for Five, six, seven, eight percent. Um, of course, they're going to come down from that, but anything below three percent, I think, is a win for everybody. We, you know, we get to offer um, an incredible educational experience for our students. We get to offer our staff uh, a terrific work work environment, and we reasonably, you know. Um, request a bit above the previous year. So I, I think it's a win, win, win. Anyone else from the committee? Yeah, Patrick, one other oh, question. Oh, Mike. For John, the, um, the two capital outlays that you propose to move to the town side of the budget, how does that get put back in, back to us, um, those projects? How does that work? Or is it by, by us doing that, by us, that capital outlay to the town. Um, yeah, so there, there's just the one, Mike, that we're we're doing with the town. That's the fifty thousand for the uh, gym upgrade. And uh, uh, sixteen thousand for the phones. No, we're deferring that one into next year. That one's going to get deferred. Okay. So we're just going to do one. And uh, I requested, um, I believe, Laurie, I don't know if we sent the letter over to, to Bob Mushin and, uh, and Tony. It's in draft form. Yeah. So we're going to, um, they're going to have them put that in their uh, capital budget on the town side. So what they'll do is they'll, in essence, uh, when it's approved or if it's approved, um, that'll be a transfer that'll come over to the town from the town to to the schools. The benefit to the town is that doesn't get it, get into the maintenance of effort. So um, when you look at um, the level of funding that the town needs to provide the schools on an annual basis, that number is taken out of it. So it's not included in that number too, because then you're funding that fifty thousand 
every year going forward. So uh, I think it's a better way of doing it, especially for some of those bigger items. So basically what you're saying is that it, if, if it does get approved, that that money will be transferred back to us to actually be able to fulfill that, that portion of the job. Right, and we did that to a little bit when we did the hardening of the, uh, the entrance in the front there, that $500,000 project. The town had uh, contributed a little over 50,000 plus the Van Buren grant that went to the town. So that money got transferred over to us to help fund that project. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else from the committee? I can just say that that project came not a moment too soon. The no. fact that that office is um, basically a hermetically sealed vestibule um, in, in the age of COVID. Um, so we are so grateful to the town, um, obviously Van Buren and also to ride the school um, building. So. Okay, I'm gonna go to public input on agenda items and topics for future agendas. I'm gonna go to Chris Goulart if he still has a question, if we can get him um hi yeah can you can you hear me hi chris yep hi um so yeah so actually my first question is um staying with the um with the gym um so with that cost being sent over to the town um i guess it's not so much even a budget question but has has there been any thought of a of a plan of sort of when and kind of what other people can use the auditorium for Chris, give me your address quick, please. Oh, sorry. Yep, it's a uh, four seven one West Main Road. Thank you, Hi, Chris. I can answer that. the um, The proposal to the SBA and also to Van Buren and also the Rhode Island Foundation that helped fund um, the upgrades to the gymnatorium, the hardening of the main entrance, et cetera, et cetera, does clearly state um, that the town this would be a, a community um, performance space, a, com a community um, meeting space, um, all of those things in, and, and with specificity. So what I could do is okay. send you that content. Sure, if sure. you um, send me your email uh, or just you know, go online, um, you can catch me right at our website or leave your email in the chat. I'll grab it and send you with specificity exactly some of the um, ways after the pandemic, after there's herd immunity, uh, that we envision that space being used by the town, um, obviously by the school and even by other groups in other towns perhaps as uh, a revenue stream. So I'm so happy to share that with you and I'm so happy to see it come to fruition. So thank everyone, you. let's yeah. get those vaccines soon. Yeah. Yeah. I hope so. All right. Thank you. Yeah. I'll um I'll, my I'll send you my, my email. That's great. Okay. Um, uh, my second question. Um, so there were. It seems like there's a lot of um, a lot of uh, money is being spent in like soft, like learning software. And I'm 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 curious if is any of that sort of just for kind of like COVID related expenses for like the hybrid distance learning, or is or is that you know pretty like all something that's just going to be sort of every, every year? I think what the pandemic has done is trigger um, a shift from some analog instructional practices to uh, you know, the, the virtual realm. But we see, we, you know, when we wrote the reopening plan, uh, Chris, we did, we did it with an eye towards post-pandemic um, teaching and learning. We did it with an eye towards being able to pivot at a moment's notice without the quality um, and depth of, of what we were teaching and learning being affected. And so we saw that Monday with our distance learning day due to weather, the snow, uh, was not due to the Super Bowl, um, as some parents thought, it, yeah, definitely the snow. And um, so we also um, created a portal, the Clever Portal, 
which is a proprietary piece of software. We didn't create that, we purchased it. And within it, we have centralized all of our online dashboards. Most of them we, we were using before the pandemic, Chris, um, our interim assessments that align with our learning standards, um, iReady. We, we um, administer those three to four times a year. Also Achieve 3000, which is a highly adaptable personal, personalized literacy program. Um, just just a, lot, a lot of these dashboards we were already using. Mm -hmm. what, we did, what we did add during the pandemic is more in line with our new presentation technology, um, the Promethean technology, where we have a huge presentation board with sort of two-way um, video. And it also comes with a suite of um, tools where we can centralize units and lessons and so forth. Um, so I would say it's sort of 50-50, 50% of the, of, of the um, programs that you're reading that, that we listed out and priced out for the public, full transparency, we were using before the um, shift to this hybrid learning year and 50% that we invested in because of this hybrid learning year, um, but with an eye towards the future. They don't mm -hmm. replace the human resource. That element is, is the most impactful for kids. Um, some of them we may drop after the pandemic. Um, that remains to be seen, to be honest. Am I right, um, Principal Whip? And also- I, I, was thinking, I was thinking the same thing. We would definitely yeah. keep an eye on what things which of the platforms that we're using are the ones most worthwhile to keep and um, you know which ones maybe we let go. But I think that we're able to get a good grip on what that may be through our experience right. this year. Right, so we, we, we may chuck a few um, after this imperative for you know hybrid learning is a distant memory. <laughs> Yeah. But they've been highly effective okay. and generally well received by teachers and, and students. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, and then my last question, um, it's a, it's a follow up um, from a, a question we had at uh, uh, the budget committee meeting, um, uh, I guess last month. Um, and, and actually Jenna Magnuski asked it. And so she's, she's here, she could probably elaborate better than, than I could, but um, she'd asked John um, uh, if any thought had been given to um, sort of a, a, I guess paying teachers for extra work that they've done um, or that they've had to do sort of after hours uh, related to, um, to COVID. Um, and um, uh, John had, had mentioned that he, he would talk to the, the superintendent about it and just we wanted to kind of follow up on that. Well, Chris, I think I can answer that one. Sure. We compensated the teachers for oh, okay. everything that, uh, as much as we could. Yep. For their um, extraordinary efforts with this, with COVID. Obviously, we wish we could give them more. Uh, but we did compensate them um, an amount. Okay, that's great. I don't know if there's anyone to add, superintendent, to that. Well, you're asking the wrong person because um, you know, teachers do the hardest work. They're in the trenches. And historically, they have been underpaid everywhere. Um, we did go into negotiations with them last summer and I think there was a really good result and everyone was happy and it was pretty smooth. I believe the negotiating team recognized not just the extraordinary efforts from last year, but uh, throughout, um, throughout the school years. And so um, the best, you know, we, we've added an EAP first ever in the history of the district, an employee assistance program. We added a vision writer. We added um, a couple of other um, perks. Um, so it's never enough as far as I'm concerned. Um, that's for sure. Mm. Uh, we're, we're, we're in it, Chris and Jenna. We're in it. Be great. Right. 
Any other questions? Uh, not for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Anything else from the committee? Or the uh, anyone else? Did I see a hand? Mike Rocha, was that your hand? I seen a flash. Like a Hannah Ayotte hand just went up, but it was a Mike Rocha face. So it was strange. Hannah Ayotte shaking her head. That's not a hand. All right, then, folks, I will uh, uh, accept the motion to adjourn. Do I have one? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Mariah? Holly Allen? Aye. Hannah Ayotte? Aye. Mike Rocha? Aye. Rita Kenahan? Aye. Patrick McHugh? Aye. Okay, we are adjourned. And what? What? What's that? We're adjourned. So we're going to see everybody in the next meeting. It we'll starts at seven, so we have a little time. Mike Roach, are you still there? Yes, yep, I'm here. Superintendent's gone? No, superintendent's Tenant. here. Superintendent's there. Who else is here still? Okay, I think we're safe, Mike. Go ahead. You have a question for the superintendent? Yeah, so. Um, Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Okay. Good, Mike. Polly, you get off, Hannah. Polly, get out. Hmm. Oh, Lori's gone. Lori's gone. Mike just had a question about the last meeting and he forgot to ask, so I didn't want to cause a stir. But Lori left, so we'll have to catch her. Maybe we'll go into the next meeting, Mike. We can talk there. We'll see. Okay. All right. Give her a, yeah. All right. Bye-bye.